The space business is another legit dollar pumping venture that creates an opportunity for private and government owned companies to make generational money of over a million dollars per rocket launch, which is why most companies that deem themselves capable of breaking through Earth's gravitational force and getting into orbit are strategizing and working on several denominations of rockets to reach orbit and even land on the moon and Mars. SpaceX has no doubt proven to the world and NASA that they have the required resources to climb the sky and reach the lower Earth orbit. But the challenges involved in getting a vehicle or rocket to lift off from Earth, overcome the G-force, and get into orbit are more than anyone can imagine. Though grace seems to shine on SpaceX, as the company has successfully sent satellites into orbit, that alone has elevated NASA's spirit to believe that one day SpaceX will take their astronauts to the moon again. However, Virgin Orbit wants to try their luck in the space game as it seems that while they folded their hands and watched SpaceX win the skies, everything was easy and rosy. But when they tried it out themselves, they unluckily tasted a little of what Elon and SpaceX faced in the early days, normally known as rocket failure. Let's talk more about how Virgin Orbit has been struck by unexpected failures as they try to land satellites in space using a Boeing aircraft. While SpaceX launches rockets using vertical launch and landing, Virgin Orbit uses horizontal launch and landing. Virgin Orbit wants to send some communication systems systems into space, but their strategies literally failed. The Virgin Orbit satellite is the first launch from the UK, which would have been a step forward for the British land to have their own private rocket company, in which, of course, taxpayers' money would be invested for the success of the company, just as the US government is doing to NASA. That's if the launch was successful, but unfortunately, it dealt a harsh blow to the country's emerging space program. This historic first orbital launch attempt from the UK was a high-profile opportunity opportunity to show investors what the company is capable of and to impress British officials who were present to see the rocket-carrying airplane take off from a spaceport in southwestern England. But the rocket failure showed an aura of gross incompetence by Virgin Orbit, compared to what SpaceX has proven with the use of its cutting-edge technology for possibilities of reducing launch costs and, at the same time, implementing reusability on rocket launches. Yet Virgin Orbit could launch rockets at a higher cost, and even at that, their rocket it is not optimized to be reused over and over again without failure. British officials who are eagerly waiting to be convinced by a successful launch so that they can help companies become financially stable were likely unimpressed, just as other customers, including the government of the United Kingdom and other private investors were. Virgin Orbit CEO Dan Hart said in a post-launch statement that its first launch attempt from the UK was a load of tosh and will work tirelessly to understand the nature of the failure, make corrective actions and return to orbit as soon as we've completed a full investigation. Britain's space program was full of hope and a crowd of people who would have bought flight tickets in the future watched as a modified Boeing 747 carrying a rocket with nine satellites took off from an airport in Cornwall, southwest England and eventually failed. Things went wrong just before midnight. The rocket was able to get away from the plane and fire its first engine. But at more than 1100 miles per hour, the rocket experienced an anomaly that ended the mission early. A spokeswoman for Virgin Orbit said the company had finalized analyzing the flight data, yet, but it looked like the rocket never reached orbit and the second stage, which carried the satellites, mostly burned up on re-entry off the west coast of Africa and means wasted resources for Virgin Orbit and the government at large. Matt Archer, who is in charge of commercial space flight at the UK Space Agency, said that British regulators were looking into the incident with Virgin Orbit to find out what happened what caused the problem and how they can fix it, so that the failures will not be repeated next time. The 747 and its crew made its way back safely, but the nine satellites that were on the rocket were destroyed. If these high-tech devices were destroyed, the people who made them and the people who paid for them could have lost years of work and even millions of dollars. Normally, failures in space are not strange, and at first attempt, this one doesn't look like it will stop Britain from trying to become a country that can both make and launch satellites. Even though the launch didn't go as planned. British
Turkish officials who sponsored the flight said it was still a big step forward. It took a long time to build the right infrastructure and set up the right rules so that Britain could be ready for the launch and eventually benefit from having a spaceport. In recent years, the British government has become more interested in space, especially under former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who left office last year. Britain is not playing a new game in the satellite industry. They've been doing it for a long time. They even have other companies that make small satellites, one of which is CubeSats, which use more communication networks. But why are countries just realizing that they need to run their own space programs? First, think about the war in Ukraine, which has become strong enough to split up powerful countries and organize a new group of allies. This same war has also made it more important to launch from one's own country. And most importantly, Britain and other countries can no longer rely on paying for rides on Russian rockets as they used to. Sir Richard Branson started Virgin Orbit in 2011 as a spin-off of his Virgin Galactic space business. He wanted to fully use the White Knight aircraft, but in the end, the company decided to use its own plane, a modified Boeing 747-400 called Cosmic Girl, to drop and launch small rockets. Since Virgin Orbit didn't make enough money on its own, it was funded for most of the past decade by the Virgin Group, which is a multi-billion dollar company. Investment company Independent estimates that during the that time, Virgin Orbit spent up to a billion dollars developing and testing its Launcher 1 rocket and air launch system. With such high development costs and low cadence for a rocket that sells for $12 million per launch, how can Virgin Orbit stay in business? It's noted that SpaceX launched more orbital class, reusable, uncrewed, and crewed rockets and spacecraft last year than most countries' governments funded space programs, let alone other private space companies. Rocket Lab was the only company that came close to matching SpaceX launch record last year. This year seems to be more of the same, as SpaceX is about to launch the prototype of the most powerful rocket ever built, the Starship, and may be able to recover the most powerful booster ever sent into space. In this race, Virgin Galactic, Virgin Orbit, and Blue Origin aren't even close enough to SpaceX to be breathing their dust. They just got started, but SpaceX has already passed them about 15 to 20 times. Even so, we still want all these space companies to do well. With an industry that's still so young, it's not like the pie is going to get smaller. And for Virgin Orbit, the idea of a horizontal launch feature, which might be a throwback to the Thunderbirds and come from the good old UK, is pretty cool. And horizontal launch will stand out from what other space companies are doing. It's also high time Sir Richard Branson considered putting away his marketing and snap dazzle getting off his island and down on the floor, and thinking about whether he wants his company to win in the space race. He could, as well, pay a visit to Elon Musk and ask him about his ideas in the rocket industry that are working for him. And Branson could also hire a few SpaceX engineers in charge of Starship production to assist in his company so that his next launches will see success. All the same, it's a great time here in the U.S. to be witnessing these space companies striving to dominate orbit. But on the other side of the coin, billionaire Branson should put away his flashy island and flashy yacht and just ask for some help. Do you think Branson Branson will one day succeed in the space game? In the other hand, Elon Musk is trying his best by confirming that SpaceX is ready to send Starship Super Heavy to orbit after a huge upgrade. Just click on the video to know everything about this.